What's the downside in Auburn going out and getting a transfer portal quarterback? You are Locked On Auburn, your daily podcast on the Auburn Tigers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on into Locked On Auburn, your daily Auburn Tigers podcast. I'm your host, Zach Blackerby, and thank you so much for making Locked On Auburn your first listen every single day. Maybe the first listen of 2024. Happy New Year to everyone. Lindsey Crosby joining me as he does every single Monday. Of course, Lindsey of Lockdown MLB Prospects, AuburnDaily.com, and a million other places. Lindsey, you and I obviously watched the bowl game over the weekend, and it was brutal. We may not have enjoyed watching the bowl game. And it's got people asking the same question that we were all asking at the start of the transfer portal window. And it's, okay, is Auburn going to go get a transfer portal quarterback now, or do they still feel okay about everything that was in front of them. And Hugh Freeze's comments after the game were, it's wide open. And so if it's truly wide open, then why aren't you considering getting a quarterback via the portal? I think at this point, you have to be, right? Because the argument for Peyton Thorne being the guy in 2024 was, yes. look at what he did in the Iron Bowl against a great Alabama defense and a great a great schemed team. Look at the toughness he showed in the run plays. Look at him making clutch plays when he had to. He really kind of, you know, put the team on his back, all those platitudes, whatever. Sure. And the problem is you don't play every game at home. <laughs> and and so 48% completion percentage, we've talked on the show before, and it was true on Saturday. We've talked about the wide receivers not helping that about the issues you have there. But you saw the, all of the downsides of Peyton Thorne. You saw the the inexplicably dumb interception. You saw, uh, you know, the the getting sacked too quickly because he was couldn't pull the trigger down. You saw all of the bad things. And you didn't see the good stuff that offsets that. And in previous games, you had a chance to see that. And Unfortunately, recency bias is a thing. That is going to sure. be the last bit that Auburn uh, fans, coaches, everybody see of Peyton Thorne for a while. And yeah. it feels like at this point, you have to do something, if nothing else, just so that the fan base uh, like understands, like we know we have to be better at quarterback than we were last year. If he is the guy, he'll beat, he'll beat him in spring where, you know, if Peyton Thorne is the guy, He'll win the job in spring. Yeah, and I think that'd be good because right now, I don't know if Peyton Thorne feels like there's a whole lot of competition. And I think the most eye-opening thing in the world for me was, okay, Holden Gurner came in. It looked like more of the same. Mm -hmm. And granted, Holden has never been put in a situation actually to succeed in real snaps. He's yeah. always put into a very crummy situation with a few times he has been put in. But then Hank Brown comes in and just torches everybody and it's like hmm okay and all of a sudden you're seeing guys that Auburn had such a hard time figuring out how to consistently get them involved in the passing game they did it over and over and over again Cam, Cam Brown caught a pass Rivaldo Fairweather continued uh, I mean he, he he was a part of the offense when Hank Brown was there heck he even got the ball to Shane Hooks on the sideline and it's like where has this been all season. And I know you can say it was garbage time. Well, I don't know. It, it looked like Maryland was, was trying to stop them. Uh, it, they played him the same way they played Holden Gurner. And Holden Gurner, you know, didn't look good and threw a pick and all of that. So I, I don't know if that's a true argument. It's not everything. And it's a small sample size. But the energy, the energy on the sideline and the energy on the team bus. I talked to a few folks after the game. The team wants to see more. Of Hank Brown. And I don't like, is that enough? Is is, is Hank Brown versus Peyton Thorne versus Holden Gurner in the spring? Is that enough? Or do you need to go out and get a transfer portal quarterback? I, I think you have to go get a transfer portal quarterback. Like I did at the start of the transfer portal window. I think that now. And you've got to find a way. To, to bring in a guy that you believe can help push this quarterback room forward. Because here's another thing. It seems like, Lindsey, that this staff, Hugh Freeze especially, wants four scholarship quarterbacks on the roster. And they've got that now with Peyton Thorne, 
Holden Gurner, Hank Brown, and Walker White will be on campus for spring. Mm -hmm. And if nothing changes, if Peyton's still the guy, I just have a hard time seeing those four guys stay the same. I'm just, I'm just going to be honest. And so you're going to have to go get a transfer portal quarterback at some point anyway, probably. And so I, to me, I think it makes sense. I think it makes sense to go get a guy. Here's the hard part with the idea. And, and I'm on board with you with go get a guy because you're probably going to have to either way. It's hard to imagine this room staying intact yeah. once you add another quarterback to the mix. Here's the hard part about the argument of leave it like it is. You have a combined 25 career pass attempts from Holden Gariner and Hank Brown. Mm. And 16 of those were on Saturday. And, and so you have Peyton Thorne, a guy who had a great season, one of his two years at uh, Michigan State. We talked yeah. about that would have been a top five season all time at Auburn. Sure. He had an okay season that still would have been a good season at Auburn. And he had a poor season. I'm going to a below average season at Auburn. One of the lowest rated SEC quarterbacks as far I as. I think it was poor. Yeah, I think it was. Poor. I mean, he vastly underachieved and he's not yeah. the only person who underachieved on offense, but he, I think if you asked him, I think he would say he underachieved. Yeah. And so to go into spring and then into next season with Peyton Thorne, who has showed you the close to the highest of highs and almost the lowest of lows, and then 25 career pass attempts behind him means if nothing else, if Peyton Thorne is who we thought he could be, you're still one injury away from having for essentially starting over at quarterback during the season. And so if nothing else, it makes sense to add a fifth quarterback, somebody with experience in college, if for no other reason than just insurance. But if it's somebody who can legitimately push Peyton Thorne because he hasn't had that at Auburn, it feels like that's the way to uh, improve the roster and improve the quarterback room specifically. Here's Here's a real scenario. I think this is there's a chance of this happening. I don't know if it's the most likely scenario, but it's probably the second or third most likely scenario. Let's say spring happens and Hugh Freeze isn't ready to name Peyton as like the foregone starter mm -hmm. going into the fall. And what if he were to leave? What if he were to say, you know, like these fans are like pretty critical of me, you know, and yeah, the situation's not great. I don't know if I want to rely on all these freshman wide receivers. I'm going to leave. I'm going to go to another scenario, uh, another situation, and maybe I can find a situation that fits me. Grad transfer. Sure. Yeah, he'll, he, uh, he's able to do that. And I think just from a technical standpoint, which technically correct is the best way to be correct, according mm -hmm. to you, is I think he actually grad transferred from here. So he, this would be his free transfer okay. for, for those keeping track at home. It, it doesn't yeah. matter. But yeah. what if he were to leave? And all of a sudden you've got, what was it, 25 career passing attempts mm -hmm. <laughs> in your quarterback room? And so I, I think to some extent, if you're Hugh Freeze, you also kind of want to hedge your bets a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we saw this season what the loss of one quarterback can do to a college football team. I mean, it kept Florida State out of the playoff. Like, like just going into a season with that little experience behind yeah. your starter just feels like it's never a great idea. Even if you had all the faith and confidence, you could have prime Peyton Manning back there and it still feels like you want someone behind him who has sure. done it in college before just to be safe. So it's it's going to be hard to convince me that going out and getting a transfer quarterback would be a bad thing. Now, yeah. do you potentially lose one of those guys out of that room? You Like you said, you absolutely could lose one of those guys. I'm not sure who it would be. Would it be Holden Gariner who committed to the previous staff? Would it be Hank Brown who... I don't uh, think Hank's going anywhere. Yeah, Baby Goat is here. Uh, it would, it probably would be Holden Gariner, I'd imagine, because he yeah. committed to the last staff. But at the same time, it's just you can't be one injury away from having nothing, no experience at the quarterback position. I'm with and, you, and it's just, it's just too risky in today's college football where so many guys get hurt all the time. You mentioned prime Peyton Manning. Who would you rather have, Peyton Manning in his prime, or Hank Brown in the Music City Bowl? Uh, it's Hank Brown, and I don't even hesitate. Okay, I'm Baby with you. Goat. I'm with you. Baby goat forever. That's right. That's right. I think he will be on tomorrow's podcast, by the way, if that is uh, something that interests you.
There were several guys who were winners, and I'm not putting Hank Brown in this conversation because I think that one's assumed uh, yeah. for the conversation we, we just know. had. We yeah, know Hank, Brown, Hank Brown. Hank uh, Brown. Number one in our hearts. As far as I'm concerned, he is the king of Music City. Uh, that's that, and we're just going to leave that there. But there were several winners. Caleb Burton was one of them. Rivaldo Fairweather. There were several. And we'll discuss those guys in just a moment. Right here on Locked On Auburn. Today's show is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. FanDuel, it's America's number one sports book for a reason. And, uh, you know, the NFL season is wrapping up, but there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel. Right now, new customers, they can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That is $150 in bonus bets, win or lose. The app is easy to use. The website is is easy to use and they allow you to live uh live bet same game parlays find bets in the new explore tab there's a parlay in the parlay hub the best way to find popular parlays and, and more they make it so much fun and easy so visit fanduel.com slash locked on to make your first bet a layup see what they did there fanduel is the official partner of the nfl and the locked on podcast network Lindsey Crosby, our guest on this Monday edition of Locked on Auburn. I think there were several kind of guys that you can point at and say, okay, despite it being a bowl game and bowl games are what they are, I don't think you can take everything that happened in a bowl game and say that this is more applicable than something that happened in the regular season. But mm -hmm. I think you can use it to confirm certain things. And Caleb Burton, to me, the wide receiver for the Tigers, I think it showed that this coaching staff believes he is a part of the future offense for the Auburn Tigers. I know that you were short on options at wide receiver, but every time but one Caleb Burton was on the field, he ran a route. 96.9% uh, route percentage. Higher for wow for anybody that ran more than one route. Um, like higher than any, higher than Rivaldo Fairweather. Like they absolutely believe in him. 78 yards on five catches. It, like you saw him out wide. You saw him in the slot, mostly out wide, but moving around a little bit. And it was obvious that they were trying to find ways to get him the ball. I mean, he got targeted more than Fairweather did. Fairweather got seven targets. Caleb Burton got 10. Uh, and so there was... A lot of people wondered, myself included, what's going to happen to some of the existing receivers when you bring in this amazing wide receiver class for next season. You bring in your Cam mm. Coleman, your Perry, like all of these guys. I feel like Caleb Burton has made the case that he needs to have some sort of role, no matter how many of those freshmen you choose to play next year. He'll have a second year in the system, and then yes. obviously he's shown the athleticism, the awareness, everything else to be a part of this offense going forward. Yeah, it's interesting, and I want to highlight something that you said very quickly there, is the idea of Caleb Burton, because that's where we saw him, for the most part, line up was more slot than outside. In the bowl game, he was out wide 47 snaps. He only played slot 8 snaps. And so I do kind of wonder if that's... I, I would think he would play slot more because Javarius Johnson left. So I think that kind of shows some of his versatility and how the staff looks at him, mm -hmm. especially with like preparing for the future with Cam Coleman and uh, and Perry Thompson coming in. You got to assume those guys are going to be outside guys. So we'll see. But the fact that he can kind of do both, get you a guy who can do both, that's Caleb Burton. So that's um, Caleb Burton's a big win uh, as far as a guy who – Maybe we shouldn't say winners because the game was so poor. Maybe we should say like stock risers. Here we go. Um, Rivaldo Fairweather is another one. I think that one's self-explanatory. I mean, he's yep. I, I, he's the best player on offense, maybe outside of Jarquez Hunter. And sometimes I almost prefer Fairweather. Nothing against Hunter. I just think Fairweather's really, really good. So on a, we'll, yeah, on a passing down, if Jarquez is not out for a route, then give me Fairweather. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. Brandon Frazier. I wonder if this is the type of role he'll have next year. I know they've pursued some tight ends in the transfer portal, and I do think they'll ultimately get one. We'll mm -hmm. see, because there's a lot of these guys that Auburn has targeted that haven't committed anywhere yet. So some of that may happen this week. And you got to think if they go out and get an athletic tight end, it probably hurts Brandon Frazier, but I don't really want it to. I, I like Brandon Frazier out there. I don't think he's a world beater, but I think it's a great story. And I said this every time that he comes up throughout the season, but 
every off season since he's been here and the portal's been a thing, it's like, all right, I kind of expect Brandon Frazier to leave. And he hasn't. He hasn't. In this age where like you leave if you don't get enough targets or enough snaps, uh, everybody like transfers out. And Brandon Frazier's not that guy. And you start to see like the the fruits of that and him being rewarded. So props to Brandon Frazier. And I hope he has this type of role next year. Here's an amazing stat for you. Eight targets for Brandon Frazier this season. Seven receptions. Two How touchdowns. About that? Yeah, I mean, it's just, he doesn't get used often. He doesn't run a ton of routes. I think he's running like 58 routes all year. But when he gets targeted, he's probably going to make the catch. And that height, you cannot teach height. So being 6'7 in the red zone, a guy that can both block and go catch the occasional pass, that is incredibly useful. Yep. I thought Jalen McLeod, Auburn's Jack linebacker, I thought he looked really, really good. The issue is, I think next year, if somebody else doesn't step up, opposing offenses are going to be able to key in on him. So they need another guy where, okay, they had to focus on him and Marcus Harris this past year, and Mm -hmm. maybe some Elijah McAllister when they both were on the field at the same time, which wasn't as much as I would have liked. But they've got to go out and either get somebody, or they've got to help Keltrick Falk take that next step, or somebody has to emerge, maybe one of these true freshmen, but we've talked time and time again it's tough to see these true freshmen really come in and make an impact from a pass rushing standpoint. That's why I think Keldrick's going to take a big snap, a big step forward over the off season. But Jalen McLeod is going to get better over the course of the off season, but it may not show up in the stats unless somebody else steps up too. Yeah. And, and part of me wonders, could Austin keys be that guy? Maybe he didn't rush a lot, but it feels like when he does, he's productive at it. He moves well. Sure. Yeah. And, but like you're you're going to have to figure something else out. And this is the same problem we talked about entering 23. You had options to rush the passer. You just didn't have enough. Mm-hmm. And when you don't have the versatility, and Ron Roberts' scheme mitigates that a bit, but when you don't have multiple threats, you have to like on every play, the offense has to know where that guy is that allows you to key in on the one threat that is there and it kind of minimizes their impact and you have to scheme around it. So someone else stepping up would be great. I don't know if Cam Riley feels like a guy that if they moved him to a Jack type position, he would be successful. I don't know if that's in the cards. I think you would play more. Yeah. And so like, like, what do you do? There's got, someone needs to do something, either bring a guy in or someone step up into that role. Yeah. I think Sylvester Smith, the, the the freshman safety is going to mm-hmm. be a guy that I'm going to talk about a ton this offseason. I really liked what we saw from him against Maryland. Kind of saw him at a um, slightly bigger sample size. He only played 13 snaps, but I was just really, really pleased with what I saw from him. Uh, I think from a pass rushing or a pass breakup standpoint, we saw him make a play there down in the middle of the field. So, I, I don't know if I want him starting, but I definitely want him part of the starting rotation in 2024. So hats off to Sylvester Smith. Lots of defensive backs moving, you know, leaving, going to the league, things like that. And so mm. you need guys to step up and you're bringing in a Juco transfer at safety, but it's not enough. And Sylvester Smith feels like a guy that has the physical tools. Yep. And so if he can pick up enough of the defense to be a contributor, not even a star, just a contributor, it's going to make this back into the defense a little more sound as we enter spring because right now it's a lot of freshmen, a lot of questions. Yeah. Two freshman defensive backs, I think, could be future stars in this conference and throughout all of college football. We discuss those two guys. And also, there there are some concerns uh, about the state of this roster moving forward. We discuss those in just a moment right here on Locked on Auburn. Lindsey Crosby looking at Colton Hood, the freshman defensive back, played 33 snaps in the bowl game against Maryland, middle of the field defender, and I was really impressed with him. We kind of got mumblings and rumors and some reports that he was getting more snaps at nickel, and I was very, very pleased by what we saw from Colton Hood in the bowl game. So we actually saw him a good bit at corner, but we did see him in the box for a few snaps as well. Yeah, and, and what I like with Colton Hood is he got some valuable experience. I mean, he had 11 snaps entering this game. He got 33 in the game, but he also, I mean, eligibility-wise, preserved a year of eligibility. He only played in four games. Uh, this, this, I think this game was biggest for any 
of anybody for the defensive backs. And you saw some of that inexperience early in the first quarter. Maryland came Mm -hmm. out swinging and absolutely just punched Auburn in the mouth. But after the first quarter, that defense got a lot better. Some of these freshmen kind of settled down, started breaking up these deep shots, started uh, really stopping Maryland from doing whatever they wanted to do. And if the offense had any sort of a pulse, not to get back on that, but if they had any sort of a pulse, this would have been a a much closer game. Yeah, uh, there's no question about it. I said, I think it was on Locked on Auburn. It may have been on Village Vice or the radio, but I was talking about how I had a hard time seeing how Maryland was going to score because what happened in the second half is what I thought Maryland's offense would look like against Auburn's defense. I didn't Mm -hmm. account for Auburn not showing up until halftime defensively. But once they settled in, you're right. I thought thought everything was fine. And the score wouldn't have been as bad if it wasn't a pick six. Like that, That was on quarterback play that was Mm -hmm. not on the defense but that's what it looks like on the box score so the last guy's Kay and Lee I think Kay and Lee's exceptional I think he is a very very special young cornerback his feet are uh are exactly what you want and the fact that he's been able to just kind of I mean he showed up to Auburn with that ability and he's only gotten better um he's been in a starting role before to start his career at Auburn because um, because Nehemiah Pritchett missed a few games to start the season. Mm-hmm. And so he kind of like wasn't really being thrown into the water. He kind of knew what to expect. But I thought he was exceptional uh, against Maryland. I know some people are harping on a missed tackle. That, that's not what I really care about when I look at freshman corners. It's just not. I want to see if they can cover in space. And he he can do that. He could do that. He's going to annoy the heck out of opposing wide receivers for as long as he's here. Yeah, I mean, uh, one, if you're counting on a freshman cornerback to make a game-saving tackle, you screwed it up defensively. That's not his yeah, job. Yeah, I mean, Larry Nixon, make the tackle in the backfield. Yeah, uh, but also targeted only twice, allowed no receptions. Uh, I'll broke take up, that. Broke up one of those two. It's something where he's a freshman, and even Maryland respected and understood this dude is talented. And yeah. like, rather than us harp on the guy for missing the tackle— Look at what the opposing team did. They said, we'd rather go after anybody else but Kay and Lee. Dude's going to be a star. Very excited about it. Again, he missed a tackle. That's fine. The other run play that he was involved in, he got to stop. So, you know what? They average out to two normal run plays. Let's not worry about it. He did great on his job, which is preventing pass completions. I'm happy yeah. with it. I thought Kay and Lee was exceptional. Big experience. As far, as far like my biggest concern, Lee, because I just think... With Hugh Freeze, there's no way he's going to let the quarterback situation be as bad as it was this year going into the next year. I, I just I just refuse to believe it. I could be wrong. I could be wrong, but I refuse to believe it. It could be developing Peyton Thorne and another year in the offense and bringing in talented receivers to throw to. Going through Sprink? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, I, I just have a hard time believing that's not going to... It may not be perfect, but it has to be better. It has to be. So I'm not as... I'm not as tore up about that. It's it's the defensive line. I, I'm concerned about the defensive line from a roster standpoint moving forward. And assuming Justin Rogers leaves, which he's accepted his invite, it sounds like they're still maybe trying to convince him to stay, but I'm not expecting him to come back. So you look at Gage Keys, the transfer from Kansas that's coming in, mm-hmm. Jason Jones, Zakevius Walker, and Quintrail Jamison Travis. Like those are your upperclassmen. And as much as I love those guys individually, like that's just not enough. And like you've got Keldrick, which we're all assuming is going to take a step forward. You feel good about that. But like Darren Reed, is he going to be ready next year? Can some of these true freshmen play? And I hear great things about Malik Blockton already who's already on campus practicing with these guys, but it's like, is that going to be enough? And Lindsey, right now, I'm saying no. I don't think it's enough. Yeah, I mean, Darren Reed got five snaps in the game. <laughs> like, he was he was barely in the game. Yes, he made a tackle, I believe, but uh, he, he got five snacks. To me, Lawrence Johnson coming in this year was big because he had experience. He wasn't a guy that would blow you away but he was reliable. He was reliable veteran depth. And I feel like right now, you don't even really have the reliable veteran depth. You know, you listed off three or four guys, but other than Jason Jones and Keldrick Falk, nobody moves the needle in any appreciable manner. And so, yes, Malik Blockton, we've heard good things. This is, to me, Jack 
and defensive line are two positions you've got to bring in some sort of college veteran who's done this, if nothing else, to be that third guy. You know, we 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 we've we've talked about last couple of seasons at Jack. There's always been one extra guy. If you wanted to play two at a, at a time, you had a third one on the bench, and that guy ended up being needed in both seasons. And it feels like this season you need to bring in another Jack. You need to bring in another defensive lineman who can beast out down there, even if Justin Rogers comes back because he's just a different type of defensive yes. lineman from a standard defensive tackle. He's more of a nose tackle and 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 maybe not a great fit for everything you want to do. He rushed the passer a lot on Saturday, and I'm not necessarily sure that was the right thing to do or the right way to use him, but that's what you had. I agree. Yeah, it's all you had. It's all you had. That's right. Lindsay, how can people uh, check out everything that you've got going on? I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball. You can follow my uh, my college baseball writing, AuburnDaily.com. You can follow the minor league baseball, Locked on MLB Prospects, wherever you get your podcast and on YouTube, and the Atlanta Braves writing, BravesToday.com. Yeah, busy uh, busy weekend for the Bravos. Um, mm-hmm. If you want to get more thoughts on the 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 big trade that they pulled off as Auburn was playing their bowl game, be sure to head over and check that out. You can find all my written work at AuburnDaily.com, and we will see you tomorrow. This has been... Locked on Auburn.